back when I was a carpet cleaner, and yes, I did that professionally. I was a carpet cleaning business owner, did some restoration. From time to time, I would come across homes that had fleas. And as I'm cleaning these homes, I would feel them on me. And I would, if you look close, I guess you can see them. They're very tiny, but I brought them home with me. And so we had to deal with them. And so today's episode with Jennifer Gordon, who's our resident urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting is interesting because it was a fight to get rid of those fleas. And I think a lot of people have had them and wanna know what to do about them. So Jennifer, welcome to the program. Tell us about fleas. What do, what do you know? Sure, uh, quite a bit. And you know, the thought of fleas is really one of those insects that can make your skin crawl. And like I always do, I will get into some of the ways fleas impact our lives and how to get rid of them. But fleas are an interesting group of insects. So adult fleas are relatively small insects, like you said, that bite animals and drink blood similar to the mosquitoes and bed bugs we already talked about. However, Unlike mosquitoes and bed bugs, fleas can jump and man can they jump. Their back legs are so powerful that fleas can jump between 50 to 200 times their length or about six to 13 inches high. But under the right circumstances, these powerful legs can be manipulated into doing other things too. That's how flea circuses actually came to be. Originally, these circuses were a way for watchmakers and jewelers to show off their skills but by the mid 1800 flea circuses were regular attractions at traveling entertainment shows. These teeny tiny little miniature objects such as carousels and chariots were created and attached to fleas. And the fleas and their powerful legs were able to make these contraptions move. You know, eventually the popularity of flea circuses died off, but that term is really stuck around. Well, in the United States, there are a few different species of fleas that can be pests, but the most common flea is the cat flea. And despite the name, you can find cat fleas on many different animals, including dogs and rodents. Well, another interesting fact about fleas is that they go through what we call complete metamorphosis, meaning they go through an egg, larva, pupa, and adult stage that's very similar to what butterflies go through. And as I mentioned before, only the adult fleas bite animals, but when you're cleaning an infested area, you may notice the larvae and the pupae too. The larvae are sort of worm-like and pretty small, but the older larvae can be longer than the adults. And the larvae don't drink blood. They actually mostly eat the poop created by the adult fleas. And the pupa, which live in flea cocoons, you know, if we're sticking to that butterfly analogy, they don't eat and can stay dormant for up to a year if necessary. So just leaving an area empty for a long time won't get rid of a flea infestation. That's interesting stuff, Jennifer. I had no idea when I, we had fleas in our home, it's like, just kill them, kill them now. And it was a fight, but I do have another important question. We're gonna look at some pictures of fleas as well, but first a quick word from our sponsor. ARCSI, the Association for Residential Cleaning Companies, helps you position your business as the professional, trusted, and experienced resource your customers need. ARCSI has the connection to the community and relevant education, training, and events that will help your employees grow and your organization succeed. Start your membership with ARCSI today at arcsi.org. So Jennifer, how do they get in? And as we talk about these fleas and what they can do to a home or even a business, I suppose, I'll put up a few images. Uh, fleas can get in in a few different ways. You know, fleas can definitely be brought into a home on pets that have been outside or visited an area with a flea infestation. Uh, similarly, if a building has rodents or other wild animals in or near it, fleas can make their way into buildings that way. But also, like I was talking about before, fleas can jump pretty high. So a person may pick up an unwanted hitchhiker and bring the flea in themselves. Occasionally, though, people who who've gone on vacation and left their house empty for a while may come back to a bunch of fleas in their house. And that's because adult fleas can live in the cocoon for months. And without an animal serving as a host to kind of suck the fleas up in the environment, it may seem like a home has unexpectedly manifested this flea infestation while the people were gone. Yeah, I remember one time, I didn't bring them home, but a friend of ours, for some reason, rescued a bird, put it in a box and brought it in. And that was another time we had fleas. So they can get in many ways as you, as you demonstrated, but how bad can it get? How can the infestation get? How bad? 
Yeah, you know, if left untreated, flea infestations can get really bad. Uh, I personally have been in homes where as soon as I step inside, I've had tens of fleas jumping on me immediately. And I could see them crawling up my white socks and light pants. And I've also been in some really heartbreaking situations where elderly and mobile people have fleas biting their faces because the infestation has been so bad and left unchecked. So when that happens, do you, when you get home, do you put things in bags? What do you do with that? Yeah. So for me personally, if I'm in a home where I think I might've picked up an unexpected hitchhiker, whenever I can, I try to get into an isolated area, such as like the, the inside of my garage or maybe a mud room and strip the clothing down and put them into a bag so that I can get them into the wash and dryer. Sounds like the bed bug issue uh, that we talked about previously. Get, yeah, don't bring them in. Don't bring them in. <laughs> exactly. Talk to us about what they need to survive. I think they're biting us, right? So are they taking advantage of that? What sure. kind of circumstances? Sure. Um, fleas need food, warmth, and humidity. So those are going to be the three big conditions for fleas. The adults need an animal, just like you were talking about to feed on, and the larvae need to be able to eat the adult flea poop. So you can often find them in or around animal bedding. Additionally, the larvae need high humidity to mature, and it needs to be relatively warm. You know, you won't really see fleas in very cold or very hot weather, but most homes are kept at temperatures that fleas can thrive in. And of course, the big question, how do you get rid of them? If you walk through a store, you see all kinds of sprays and potions, but uh, tell us about that. What do we do? Absolutely. You know, getting rid of fleas may require collaboration from a bunch of different groups of people, including your homeowners, your pet owners, uh, pest management professionals, and cleaning professionals. So first, if the fleas are coming from wild animals or visiting a home, the wild animal needs to be removed from the house or removed from the area, and the house needs to be closed up to prevent new animals from getting in. This can be done by building maintenance in commercial buildings or homeowners and landlords. Second, if there are pets, uh, they need to be treated for fleas. And this can be done by groomers, pet owners, or veterinarians. And if you're treating the animal yourself, make sure you read those labels very closely and follow all of the directions. And third, and this is where our cleaning professionals really come in. You know, homeowners and cleaning staff need to pick up all of the objects off of the floor and vacuum floors and upholstered items very thoroughly, paying close attention to where the animals sleep and along the wall and where the floor meet to remove any fleas, larvae, and pupae. Those vacuum bags need to be sealed immediately and disposed of outside as far away from the building as possible. And lastly, any additional areas or hard surfaces where pets or animals lay need to be thoroughly cleaned. And once this has been done, a pest management professional can come and treat inside and maybe even outside using an appropriate pesticide and following all label directions. You know, eliminating a flea infestation is best done through teamwork and cleaning professionals can play a huge role. Well, that's who we're mainly talking to. So uh, they have a lot of work to do. And of course, uh, dealing with fleas is not an easy task as you're demonstrating with your uh, commentary. Last question is, and you've talked about people being bit and even on the face. What does this mean for public health, a flea infestation? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, fleas are another one of those insects that can have a very direct impact on public health. You know, as you mentioned, the bites themselves can be very itchy and leave welts, but very rarely, fleas can spread diseases such as murine typhus or plague, and plague in particular has historically impacted human civilization, killing millions of people during the Middle Ages. And you might have heard this called the Black Death. But even today, there are a handful of cases in plague annually in rural parts of the United States, especially in the Southwest. Uh, fleas can also cause tapeworms in animals and people, often young children. And finally, fleas can impact mental health too. So if you're in an account with a very heavy flea infestation, you know, approach the situation with compassion and empathy if possible. Like all of the pests we've talked about, fleas can be tricky. And if you need any help creating protocols to keep fleas down or protecting your staff, don't hesitate to reach out. <laughs>